Sairam, how do we practice living in the present on a daily basis? How do we sustain it? Very, very important and practical question because this is where the buck stops. We know all this theory now. How do we do it? It is the mind that is the crux. That is why Swami would say, Mana eva manushyanam karanam bandha mokshayo. The mind is responsible for bondage as well as liberation. The mind is the key and the heart is the lock. Swami will say, turn it right and you unlock to freedom. Turn it left and you are locked into bondage. So the same mind that gives us thousands of reasons why we are not able to live in the present can definitely give us reason how we can live in the present. And that is where I want to focus on one powerful practical technique that I have experienced in recent times as well that I would like to share. What is this technique? You know, this technique uh, helps for helps at the physical level, at a mental level, and definitely at a spiritual level. And uh, this is something that Swami has reiterated again and again many times in his discourses. Our breath, twenty-one thousand six hundred times, I think Swami says, uh, we keep breathing in a day, and. This breath is such a beautiful thing. It's a rhythm. It's a biological clock that keeps ticking. We today, of course, have our clocks, watches, but even without them, we will be able to do everything just like our ancestors, just, just like our, the animals do sleep, get up, do things because we have a rhythm and this rhythm is set by this breath. In fact, in our uh, Bharatiya tradition, we do not believe that our lifespan is given in number of years. We believe that our lifespan is given in number of breaths. And that is why when you have yogic techniques of mastering your breath, breath control, you are able to live longer. Look at the animal kingdoms. Those animals that breathe slower live longer. The tortoise breathes the slowest and lives the longest. Other animals breathe fast, they die off fast. There is something amazing and powerful in the breath. Recently, I watched a documentary on a very well-known platform and in that it was about a person who loves doing caving meaning he goes exploring caves underground uh, unknown places where people have not yet been there and once when he was exploring with one of the caving experts two of them they go together everywhere suddenly there was a storm outside because of which flood waters entered the caves underground caves everywhere flooded everything and he was caught gasping for life just with a few inches of space left behind his nose and the roof and he was stuck he thought he's going to die there he thought it's finished somehow he managed to come out of that situation but then the whole cave system is flooded no way to get out of the cave and they're freezing chilled to the bone and he's convinced that though i didn't die by drowning i'm going to die of hypothermia because it's gone. I'm dead. But he survived. 18 hours he survived and he came out of the cave. After 18 hours, once the flood waters receded. And how did he do it? He says, I don't know, something within me. You know, we are lucky to know what is this something within me. He just says, something within me said, focus on your breath. Unbelievable. He says, I began to just focus on my breath. And I could feel a warmth in my nose and in my chest area. And rest of my body was no longer me. I mean, you don't know whether this is a caver speaking or this is a spiritual seeker speaking or a sage speaking, you know, when you listen to him, he says, my body is not me and I just focused on the breath and it kept me warm. <laughs> How? How does breathing keep you warm? It did. He's there. He's living to tell the tale. And he said, I came out and after 18 hours, that is what gave me energy and then I came out of the breathing for 18 hours. What did you do to survive? He said, I breathed. Survive. We all breathe. But do we focus on our breath? You know, this is God got me inspired. And many times, you know, I am prone to bouts of anger. I get upset and angry, irritated very easily. Whatever it is. Uh, so recently when I was on the shuttle court playing badminton, my partner I felt is in the wrong. He's not listening to me. And when I'm talking, he's trying to argue with me. I got very upset with him. I shouted at him. And... In fact, he said, you go to the, you, you are, you change your partner, you lose because you are, what you are doing is wrong. You know, he almost said it like that. So we changed partners and now my partner was my opponent. We are playing doubles, badminton, right? So when this is happening, I just remembered this breathing thing. Breathe, Arvind, breathe, breathe. 
and let me tell you dear brothers and sisters i didn't do any spiritual thing nothing no bringing in swami no think seeing swami nothing i did no spiritual aspect at all i just decided i'll focus on my breath even as i'm playing badminton because when i play shots the breathing will become faster than again i'll breathe i'll breathe you won't believe it all the taunts that were coming to me all the insults that were coming nothing seemed to matter suddenly because i didn't have time for them i was just focused on my breath slowly the game improved though we were the weaker side we beat them not once not twice the third time when we were beating them they were wild they were upset they were so angry they were they are sledging they are talking loud trying to disturb our focus but i was absolutely calm and then we had decided that we'll stop after three games they said let's play the fourth game because they wanted to beat us it was hurting them from inside i think they couldn't beat us even in the fourth game then they gave up this and no need because it will be insulting to lose a fifth game as well i not only got victory i was feeling so calm within this breathing for him it kept him warm it kept my heart warm and it kept me in such a good space it kept me protected from all the uh, taunts that were coming and it kept me at absolute peace amazingly powerful this technique is yes when people tell i am depressed what i should do breathe <laughs> breathe i am irritated what should i do breathe irritation frustration anger all these are symptoms of not living in the present when i am in the past or when i am in the future and to live in the present breathing breathing is the perfect expression of living in the present it's happening now and each breath is important whether we realize it or not just focus on the breath in fact uh, i have done a video on uh, jyoti meditation interestingly while speaking about jyoti meditation swami there's a discourse clip also in that uh, video in that swami is saying when you prepare for jyoti meditation first even before you focus on the light and all that right swami says make your mind a watchman at the tip of your nose <laughs> and swami says now look at the air going in the air coming out so look at the breath focus on the breath so even in jyoti meditation swami speaks about breath meditation and many times in his discourses swami says the ultimate for life is there in your breath only so hum so hum no swami has given the so hum meditation which brings in along with the physical and mental benefits physical benefits i explained with that kevers example mental i gave example of my own what i have seen in the badminton court it happens it helps in every other thing spiritually swami says you will go closer from i am the messenger of god to i am the son of god or the daughter of god to i am god so hum so hum it reinforces so hum so hum you know we often say keep good company what do we mean by keep good company we think we should not go with people who speak negative and swami has given a definition good company is that which takes us towards god so any friends any relatives any family members who take us closer to god they are good company anybody who don't however close they might be relationship wise it's bad company we think run away from bad company means run away from these people but you know the company that we keep day in and day out our own thoughts our own thoughts we criticize ourselves we curse ourselves i am a loser i can't do it it's gone this is sad frustrating i am so depressed i am so irritated i am so angry this is all things that we are keeping company company of our thoughts and that is why swami says do namasmarana because that is the good company i need to keep the best company is the ultimate truth let truth be my company let satya sai be my company satya sai satya what is that satya i am god aham brahmasmi that is so hum so hum so hum <laughs> so hum so what i'm trying to say is when i think of a practical way of practicing living in the present one technique that is what i wanted to share here one technique that i have found very useful for me is to focus on the breath and as i said let it begin by just a physical focus on the breath slowly we will evolve slowly it will become part of our breathing our breathing is not only at a physical level i am breathing at my emotional and mental level also and finally i am genuinely breathing like a yogi 
nothing ruffles me after that i am so busy in so hum so hum i am able to see the transients i am able to see the ephemeral nature i am able to see the temporary nature of everything else other than so hum everything becomes so meaningless so small distractions that's all ripples on the surface of the ocean while i am at the depths in the calm nothing ruffles me nothing disturbs so this is a technique which i have definitely benefited from uh, there will be many other techniques as well as i said that's why i don't want to discuss different things that stop us from living in the present i want to discuss this one technique that definitely helps us to live in the present